everyone. Welcome back. It's Miss Vivian here. So we're going to get started on our personal narrative. So today we are working on our beginning paragraph. And right now you should be on, after this video, you want to be on your document in your writing folder called your personal narrative. So this is our outline. I see on page number one, it kind of gives us the information. What is this essay and what's going on? So we've already been working on a lot of parts of this, learning what it is and things like that. Let's just go ahead and read through this together. So I noticed the prompt, or what I'm writing about, is a story about one of the best, strangest, funniest, or worst things that has happened to me. Who am I writing this to? A, another student or a teacher, okay? So other students and your teacher will be reading this. So I wanted to take our personal narrative and kind of look at it like a ice cream sundae. I love ice cream sundaes. I know in an ice cream sundae, I usually have three layers. So I have a bowl, or sometimes you might have a cone, I have all my ice cream, and then at the end, I have some sprinkles and a cherry to top it off. So we're gonna look at it as parts of our essay. Our beginning is gonna be our bowl layer. Our middle is gonna be all the good stuff. We're gonna have all our story in there, like the ice cream scoops. And then the end is gonna be the last little details that we sprinkle on. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So down here, if you notice, if you have not typed your story topic, you need to make sure you do that. So Miss Pippin put, the story I chose to write about is the moment I got cashew. Now this is a topic you already picked last week when you were working. So if you need to open that document from last week to see what you decided to write your essay about, go ahead and do that. Now remember, this should not be a big watermelon moment. This should be a small seed moment. You should not be telling Miss Pippin about an entire vacation, an entire day, an entire sports game. You pick a small moment from that time that you would like to focus in on. Okay, so let's go to our beginning. I see it says page two beginning and I'm in my bowl layer. So I'm getting started. I'm not gonna tell my story yet. I'm not putting the ice cream scoops in there. I'm just getting started. Okay, so yesterday you worked on hooks for your personal narrative. In your directions, Ms. Pippin said to write down your hook on a piece of paper. So when you did today's assignment, you'll have it right there ready to go. So for my essay, I'm going to use a sound hook for my, for my five senses because my story about getting cashew when I went there, I went to the Humane Society actually to get him. And I remember when I was there, I could hear dogs barking all around me. So that's what I'm going to use for my hook. I'm going to say, whoop, whoop. I could hear the dogs barking in the animal shelter around me. Now, I need to make sure this is a sentence. So my first letter is capitalized and I added a period. Okay, let's go ahead and move to box two. Box two says setting. Paint the picture. Hmm, what does Miss Pippin mean by that? So let's read. This means use at least one to two sentences to describe the setting of your story. Remember, setting is where and when the story takes place. Now, I don't want to say be boring. I don't want to just say, I was at the animal shelter. Boring. I'm going to give the reader some details. I remember when I got cashew, it was a nice summer day and exactly where I was. If anybody's ever heard of the Huron Valley Humane Society, it's in Ann Arbor. That's exactly where I was. So I'm going to share that in this sentence so I can give my reader some good details. I'm going to say it was a nice sunny summer day and I was at the Huron Valley Humane Society in Ann Arbor. All right, capitalize my sentence, added a period. Also, if you're looking, you might notice I have a lot of words capitalized. That's because I used a lot of proper nouns. That means a person, place, or thing in the name of that person, place, or thing. So I used Huron Valley Humane Society 
I made sure to capitalize that because that is the name of the animal shelter. And then I also capitalized the city and Harvard. All right, now I'm gonna to move to my last box. The whole point of a personal narrative, friends, is that we're showing some emotion. Remember at our prompt, it said the best, worst, funniest thing that has ever happened to you. This was probably one of the best things. And I remember how I felt this day, I was excited. Now I noticed Ms. Pippen says emotion and it says, how did you feel and why? So I was super, super excited. Why do you think I was excited, friends? So let's think about a humane society. What do we know that we have there? There's animals. So I was super excited to hopefully be able to adopt a new puppy. Now this sentence shows a lot of emotion. The topic of the sentence literally says emotion. So does anybody remember what end punctuation mark I use if I'm showing a lot of emotion? Hmm. If you're thinking exclamation point, you got it right. I'm gonna put an exclamation point because I was so, so, so excited. All right, now my very last step, once I have my three boxes filled in, I'm not gonna move ahead. Ms. Pippen said we're only working on our beginning today. What I'm going to do is read it out loud to make sure it sounds good. So I'm gonna read this out loud. When I'm finished reading, I want you to give me a thumbs up or thumbs down to the screen if you think it sounds good or if I need to fix anything. All right, listening ears. Woof, woof, I could hear the dogs barking in the animal shelter. It was a nice sunny summer day and I was at the Huron Valley Humane Society in Ann Arbor. I was very excited to hopefully adopt a new puppy. All right, what are you guys thinking? Show me with your thumbs. I give this a thumbs up. I have all my details, my hook, my setting, and my emotion, and I am all set. All right, remember, do not turn this document in. You only need to turn in the Monday assignment. We don't turn the outline in until we're all done and Miss Pippin will tell us. Bye, friends. I will see you guys next week when we start to work on, we'll be working on our middle and our ending. Bye.